Hi guys, Rose here with The Cackling Moon. This is going to be a little story for you guys to hear. Um, I want to share with you my experience yesterday um, taking Reiki. It was um, a Reiki 1 certification class and um, I had signed up for it a couple weeks ago. So I wanted to just come on here and share with you guys my experience. I had a lot of you asking me um, on Instagram how it was and rather than just repeating myself over and over again I figured I should probably film a video so that you guys can refer back to it mm. <sighs> Morning coffee <laughs> um, So I thought I would you know Do that and I have the whole house to myself. It's just me and my hubby and I have my beautiful flowers that he gave me. He um he surprised me with flowers like a couple days ago. Um, but now that I have the whole house to myself, I thought, you know what? This is a really good time to film this video. Um, so I signed up for the Reiki One class, like I said, a couple weeks ago. I had been interested in Reiki, and for those of you guys who don't know what Reiki is, Google it. Um, you know, I'm not going to go into the whole like history and all of that about it, but Google it, and um, and basically, it's energy healing. It is the process of um, being able to heal yourself through touch and through the power of symbols and intention. Um, but there's there's more to it. There's like a whole beautiful story and a beautiful history to it as well. So look it up on your own time. Um, and what I was told, this was like maybe I had an energy or a Reiki session like two and a half years ago. It's been a long time. Um, and I remember the girl that did it for me. She told me, you know, one day you should really look into doing this for yourself um, and learning. And it was always like in the back of my mind because that was always like, okay, that could be, you know, something else that I could do aside from my tarot readings, which are healings in themselves. Um, but she told me, and I remember this always stuck with me, and she told me, your Reiki master or your Reiki, the teacher that you will be, that will be attuning you, that will be teaching you Reiki, will find you. And I was like, I never really understood that. Um, I always felt, well, how are they gonna know I wanna do Reiki, you know? Like, I just, I, I, that's me. I tend to doubt a lot, which is just part of my process and my, oh, my whole spiritual connection. And so she said, um, she'll find you or they will find you. And so <laughs> I didn't understand that and I just let it go and I continued my readings and whatnot. And then I really started to think about it and I was like, you know what, maybe it means like when you have the right energy and you put out the intention that I wanna learn this, someone who does it will put themselves in your position, like the, not in your position, but they'll, they'll put themselves around you. And, or, or just like synchronicity happens, you know, you'll find each other. Just like some clients seem to find me randomly, but it turns out like the things I post on Instagram are perfect for them, like they have to see that. So I think it's like that, it's synchronicity that brings us together, right? So anyways, um, you know, I've seen a couple Reiki masters um, throughout my journey so far. And um, I've worked at two metaphysical stores um, as a reader and so you know I came across a lot of um, Reiki healers and, and and all of that but nobody felt right for me um, I felt like it wasn't my time I wasn't ready for that yet um, it wasn't on top of my list of things I wanted to do and so I took that as like okay it's just it's just not time and um, and then a couple weeks ago Maria, who she goes by Hija de la Agua on Instagram, posted about, this was like months ago. I remember I asked her too. Um, she bought her house in March 
And I remember I was so happy for her when I saw that she bought her house because it was Maria and I have we have like known of each other and followed each other for a few years I started my journey like five six years ago and I want to say it was about five years ago or so that I found Maria or she found me or I don't remember who found who <laughs> but we've been following each other since tumblr days like when we had tumblr blogs um and I've always felt connected to Maria. I have always felt like we could be sisters. We have the same or similar personalities. We're both Pisces. Um, she, she's, she's, you know, she's going through a lot of things that I go, I'm going through, or I feel like she's going through it first and then I go through it right after. Um, you know, we're both trying to conceive. We are both, we were both, you know, heavy in our tarot journeys and making it, um, a, a living out of it. And, um, Maria started to read in physical, metaphysical stop, shops. And then like shortly after I did, and then, um, you know, I saw Maria took the, she took the leap, but she does this full time. I haven't yet, but I made the leap and I still, I'm proud of it, but I made the leap of making it part time. Um, and so I just felt a lot of synchronicity with Maria. Like we just connected and she's funny and she's just like has a bubbly, funny mama like personality to her. And when I saw that she bought her house, I was like, oh, that means I'm going to get my house lit soon. Because I, I, every time I see Maria like do something, I know it's like, okay, it's going to happen soon for me. Um, and so she bought her house and I was so excited for her. I saw her, how she was like posting pictures of making her reading room up, her Reiki room. And I was just like, oh my gosh, she's living the dream that I have too. And so I just remember I admired that and I loved it. And then she started posting how she was going to start um, teaching Reiki and hosting classes in her home. And she does Reiki sessions in her home and this and that. And I was like, that's who I need to have teach me. And I, it just, it was like, it just clicked. It was like, there was so many, there's so many synchronicities and connections with me and Maria. It only made sense that it was her. So when she started to advertise her classes, I remember, I remember I sent her a DM and I asked her just really casually like about her class and you know, when and, and how much and what is the process? And, and she had mentioned that, um, she's already getting a wait list. And so I wanted to just be put on the wait list. You know, I wasn't thinking that I was going to be able to be, um, taking the class right away. I just, I knew it was like, okay, well, if there's a wait list, I'll let like put me on it. And then she messaged me, I think it was like maybe a day, the day, the next day, or it could have been the same night. I don't remember. Um, and she said, does the 21st of July or the 4th of August, it was, they're both Saturdays. Are you free either of those days? And I looked at my calendar and both Saturdays are landed on Saturdays. I don't work at the library. And I was like, I'm free both Saturdays. That's so cool. And so she said, you know, the classes, it's a one day class. And, and, um, and so I picked the 21st and I picked the 21st because it was sooner. And I knew, I know myself, I'm a Pisces. I flake out. Okay. As a Pisces, that's like one of the most, the things I'm not proud of about myself is I do, I do flake. I, I get scared, anxious, nervous. If I overthink it, if it's, if it's too far along and I have a lot of time to think about it, I'll start thinking of ways I can get myself out of it. Um, so I, I said, let's just do the 21st. It's sooner. Um, it's a two number and twos resonate with me with my birth and my birth date. And like just twos are my number. It's been my favorite number since I was a little girl. <sighs> And the 21st is the, the day that's the, that's my wedding day. So it's just makes, there's so much synchronicity with 21. So anyways, um, so she signed me up and I waited and she said in the, in the next couple weeks, pick a crystal or something, a piece of jewelry or something you want to consecrate during your session for the attunement and, you know, bring a notebook, this and that, blah, 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 blah. So I was thinking about it all and I couldn't decide on what crystal. And then the, the, uh, the day of, literally the day of, I was just sitting there looking at all of my crystals and I had like a pile of them that I was like, well, I could have this one and this one and this one. And then I was like, you know what? Why don't I just take my Labradorite Palm Stone 
I always hold him when I meditate. It only makes sense that he would be the one that I would take with me during this, this experience. And so that's what I did. So um, this is just a palm stone labradorite and he's so flashy. I mean, one side he's like super flashy. You probably won't be able to see it because of the glare of the, the lights and stuff, but major flashes on this guy. And so I threw him in my purse. I threw a couple other crystals just in case I had like last minute thoughts or whatever, or at least I wanted their energies with me in the purse. And I went and it took about an hour to get to her house. And the whole time I was driving there, I was just thinking, um, I, I, I want to be calm. You know, I was trying not to get like road rage or get annoyed by people driving and this and that. Um, I was trying to be chill. I caught like a couple pieces where there was some traffic. and But the whole way there, I was just like thinking, what do I want to get out of this experience? You know, this is something, this is a next, a next step for me. This is another level. This is me preparing myself to be able to offer a new service to people when I have my own home and my own reading room. So to me, it was like, this was a very big step for me. And so I arrive at her house and I'm walking up the driveway and her house is just, I, I it's just beautiful. I think I must have complimented her on it four or five times. Um, it gave me the essence of my grandfather's house. It was just the same feeling. And it was so beautiful. And I remember I was just like walking up and I knocked on, I rang the doorbell. And then when I went inside, it was just like, oh my gosh, this, this is so beautiful. It's so cozy. It's it's like everything that I like have imagined for myself. And I was like, oh my God, it was just beautiful. And, um, and so she took us into the reading room, the room where she does her Reiki healings. And it's just, you know, a, a nice cozy space. She has like her crystals on display, her little altars. And she had like the, the bed that, that you lay on when you get your healing session. It was just perfect, you know, it was perfect. And she had two chairs there because it was me and one other student. So it's super, a super intimate class. It's just me and one other person. And um, so we sat down, I took out my notebook I had my pen and my paper ready because I, I take a lot of notes. I, I, I learn by writing it down, you know? And so we started the class and she just went over what Reiki is, the history of it, which was so interesting. Um, she went through just the process of, of, you know, the intentions and the daily affirmations that you should be working on and saying and the 21 day, um, the 21 day, like, I don't even know what you want to call it. Like, it's, it's just like after you are attuned for 21 days, you're, you're practicing it. So every day you are giving yourself Reiki and you are just, just in the moment and you may be experiencing things. Maybe you'll be experiencing, um, some stuff. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a really cool journey. It's a cool journey. So, um, then we talk about we start talking about the chakras so all of the energy points in our body we talk about the color associations and the energies that you may feel when you're not balanced or when you are balanced um we start talking about the process of like how you handle a session with yourself how can you handle a session with a client you know that kind of stuff um so she she, she went over all of that and then she says, okay, you know, so we're practicing like the symbols and stuff. And for the sake of the fact that, you know, I want that experience to be really like real for you guys. I'm not going to tell you what the symbols are or show you. Um, that's for you guys to discover when you are in a class. So anyways, we go over the symbols and, you know, she wants to make sure we know how to do it, how to say it, how to feel it. Um, and then we start practicing. So she does a mock um, energy thing on just on the bed, pretending like there was someone there. And she was showing us, you know, how to body scan. And, you know, and I do body scans for my clients when I do my energy readings, my channeled energy readings. Um, it's like based on meditation and I, I look at your photo, especially cause it's all remote, you know, since I can't see you guys in person all the time. Um, so I was 
familiar with the body scan, but only from my like third eye perspective, not from an actual like feeling the energy with your hands. And so then she had um, the other student lay on the bed and I did my body scan on her. And so, you know, you stop, you start at the, um, at the third eye and then you like move down. You, you just do, you just, you, you start from the top. You always start from the top of the head, like the top part. And then you move all the way down, all the way down to the toes and all the way down the arms to the fingertips. Like you're, you're scanning with your hands throughout the whole person's body. And, um, and while you're doing that, you're paying attention, taking notes mentally, or you can have a notepad, she says, you could take notes there, especially if you're getting a lot of information, and just write down or mentally note areas of that person's body that you feel are off or unbalanced or that you had a vision with or whatnot. So I did my body scan on the, the student, and um, and it was crazy because I was like, I told her, I go, you know, I'm feel, I feel like there's there's some issues with an X because like when I went over her heart chakra, I was feeling like ex, like an ex-boyfriend energy and I was feeling like there was like unsaid, unspoken words. Um, and then I went over her belly and her like sacral chakra region, her abdomen, and I, I got the image of a flame. And, um, and then I, so I made a mental note of that. And then I went over her feet, her legs, um, her knees, and on her left side, her left side felt so much hotter than her right side. Um, and on her knee, on her left knee specifically, um, I, made, I made a mental note because that's where I really felt like a shift in, in the temperature. So I said, you know, when I was telling her my evaluation, I was like, um, ex-boyfriend energy, unspoken words. And then I said, I, I, I saw, or I, I saw a flame in your belly or your abdomen region. And I, you feel really warm, like a lot hotter on the left side, something with your knee. And so she comes back and she goes, I have been talking to my ex-boyfriend. He's been on my mind a lot boom there's one hit two i am on my period so when you're on your period you're inflamed okay like you're feeling the, you're feeling it down there so of course i was seeing a flame and then three which was crazy she had said she had um issues with her knee or i don't know if she had like a knee injury or she had issues with her knee on her left side <laughs> so you guys like when that when she said that i was just like holy shit you know, it's like when you really, when you trust what you're feeling and getting, like you are so spot on. So I was like, ah, I felt like cool, you know, cool. And that just validated for me, like when I do my energy healing um, readings for you guys that I need to just trust what the hell I see and what I get because nine times out of 10, it's probably correct. Um, so then we did that and then um, we took a break and then Maria had us back in the classroom and she had us actually do a Reiki session. So we did a Reiki session on each other. Maria kind of did a mock one first to show us what, you know, how it's done. And then she wanted to just sit back and watch us do it on each other. So she knew that we knew what we were doing and, you know, get the experience of it. So we did each, we each did a Reiki session on each other. And um, when I was having mine being done, like when she was doing, when the student was doing hers on me, I was, it's like you're in a meditation, but then you're still like aware and you feel the sensations, like the tingles. Like I, I was feeling tingly in certain areas where she, you know, was hovering her hands over and then she would place her hands on me like to boost that, that energy center. So she focused a lot on my throat, which I needed that. Um, because I, like, as you guys know, I've been feeling spiritually disconnected. She touched my crown chakra a lot. She did my throat. When she put her hands on my throat to, to give me like that charge, um, it felt like a hug and that'll make sense later as I get further into this. Um, and it was so nice. She focused a lot on my feet. Um, because that's like, I seriously, you guys, like as a reader, as an intuitive, 
I don't focus enough on grounding myself. And it's funny because I always tell my clients, make sure you're grounded, make sure you're grounded, but I don't do that for myself often. And so that's why I get so burned out. So she focused on the feet and it was just like, I was getting involuntary, um, like, um, what's the word? Like my, my, my finger would move like this, you know, I'd have like an involuntary spasm throughout my body. And um, so I, mo I made a note of that because I wanted to ask Maria, is this something that some people experience? And then, you know, just feeling the tingles and all of that. And, and, and then oh, she was like all in my um, upper region, like my crown, my third eye, my throat. And I don't remember if she was in my heart or my throat, but she was around here. And in my mind's eye, I literally saw my eye open up. <laughs> and when I did that, when I, when that happened, it literally looked like there was a spirit over me and I just, I saw their eye open. And when I saw that, I was like, I knew, like, I knew that that, that was a point where, because I was feeling so spiritually disconnected that it was like my third eye reopened. So that was a really profound moment too for me. So then after the session was done, I told, you know, I told the girl, um, my experiences, how I was feeling. I shared the third eye moment. I shared my involuntary spasm things. Um, and then I, it was my turn to do the Reiki session on her. So when I got up, I was fine before that, right? And throughout the session that I was doing on this, the other student, I had the burp. So <laughs> I, I had all of this like burp coming out of me. And so I had apologized. I apologized. Like, I was like, I'm sorry. Like, see, I have it right now. I was like, I'm sorry, but it's, it's, um, I wasn't like this before. And then now all of a sudden, and throughout the whole session that I was doing the Reiki session on her, I was like, I had the little bit of burps and it was, it was, it was just like, it was weird because it was kind of like, I don't know if that was, if that was a, a, um, like a reaction to the Reiki session that I received or if that was like symbolic, my, like my body showing me, I was allowing the energy that I was putting into the student to come through me. So I don't know. It was, it was hard. It was weird to make sense of it because literally you guys immediately after I did my Reiki session on the student, the burp stopped. It's, I'm not even kidding you. I wasn't burping anymore. So Maria goes and she says, you know, everybody experiences it. Everybody experiences their sessions different, you know, and because like I had just gotten one and then I was giving one, you know, it could be that, but take everything as what it could be. And so it was really funny because I wasn't burping anymore after that. It was like, wow. <laughs> and <clears throat> so then the student that was there with me, she had already been attuned. I think she was just taking the class as like a um, a refresher for herself. So she left because um, basically the class was done except for getting attuned. So then she left and it was just me and Maria and Maria sets up the chair so that she could stand behind me and I'm sitting there and, and I had my, I've, I pulled my Labradorite out. Maria didn't even have to tell me, I just already knew. I was like, okay, this is the moment where we're gonna be doing some big stuff. <laughs> And so I, I was holding my Labradorite and Maria says, you know, we're going to go through a meditation together where I'm going to attune you and it's going to be a guided meditation. So just follow it and let yourself go with the flow of it. So she's starting the meditation and the whole meditation surrounds the, about your, basically your soul, you is you, you imagine yourself as like this, this life force in a tree. And then it's like, she took me out of, out of here, you know, the world and into the universe. And I was basically like, your soul is finding its home where you were originally from, you know, like past life stuff. Right. And so, you know, I was just trusting what my mind, my third, my third eye, like my mind's eye was where it was taking me. And, um, in the guided meditation, Maria was like, just go up, go up into the universe here and find where you came from. Your soul, when you like, it's like, you know where your home is and you'll start to see the structure of your home, of this place. Okay. So when, during the meditation, 
it was, and I'm already starting to feel emotional. During the meditation, I was seeing a stone structure, kind of like a pyramid, right? And it actually, now that I think about it, it reminds me a lot of um, the pyramids in Mexico, um, the stone ones. And, <laughs> and so there's this like stone structure, right? And there's water all around it, like water, as if like the stone structure was floating above the ocean. And, um, and so then in the meditation, Maria says, you know, this is where you came from. This is where you, where your home is. And I get emotional, I think, because it felt so, <laughs> it felt so real. It felt so like, um, like familiar. And it's supposed to, because it's like where you came from. And I'm telling you guys, like this meditation like blew my mind. It was insane. Oh, okay, let me see if I can get like a, <laughs> get a hang of myself. So anyways, <clears throat> in the meditation, she goes, um, open the door. And when you open the door, your most, where you belong, your purpose, your family, like, I don't even know how she worded it will be revealed to you. And so I'm climbing, floating, like flying. I don't even know. It's like this this stone pyramid in the middle of the ocean. Um, I'm climbing the steps and I'm ready to open my door. When I open the door, I am in the kitchen of the house that I grew up in and I am facing this huge wooden table that we used to have. And it would have like six, seven or eight chairs, I don't know. It was a big table my mom had bought. And um, we would all have our dinners. The whole family, like that was a big thing with my family, we would always have dinner together. And so <laughs> I opened the door and I met that scene. We're all there, except for me. I mean, like I'm standing there. And my whole family is there and we're having dinner. <laughs> it was so crazy. And I remember, I remember when, um, when I saw that vision, I kind of like smirked to myself in my mind's eye because, um, <clears throat> I was like, isn't this supposed to be like the mystical moment? And I'm seeing my house, like my family, like what, what's going on? <laughs> and so everyone's there though, like, my brother is there. And as you guys know, my brother passed away two years ago. And um, he's there. And my sister is there. And we're all together. And, and then it was like spirit was around. Because, okay, also in this meditation, Maria had called upon angels, God, and like all of my spirit guides and my men and everybody, everybody was there. And it, I'm telling you, like in the meditation, when she, as soon as she called on everybody to be there, it's like you feel them entering the room. And I felt my brother enter the room and my grandma and like my grandpa and like everybody. And it was just a beautiful, it was a beautiful experience. It was so touchy. And so anyway, <clears throat> in the meditation, after I opened the door and I saw my family sitting there at the table, you know, she's like, go talk to them. <laughs> you know, what, whoever, whatever is behind that door, because Maria doesn't know. All she knows is like, she's, she's guiding me in the meditation and I'm sobbing. <laughs> I'm sobbing. And, um, and so I go into the room and I'm, you know, hugging my brother first. He's like the first person I hugged. And it's just, I must have said, I love you over and over again to everybody that was there. <laughs> and then I saw my cat and my cat was, uh, I, he was my baby since I was 10 years old and he passed away when I was, Oh, let's see. 
when did me and my husband get married? In 2015. I think I was 29 when I got married. So my, my cat passed away when I was 28. And he was 18 years old when he passed. And I had him through every relationship. And so he was special to me. And, and it was like my cat passed away. Like It was like three months. I think it was in August when he passed away. But he passed away a few months before my husband proposed to me. So it was kind of like Tigger knew. <laughs> like he knew my husband was going to be there to take care of me after he passed. So it was just like he was like giving the torch to my husband. Like you take care of her now. I've done it. <laughs> So anyways, um, when I saw Tigger, I, I started sobbing all over again. And um, so, you know, for a few minutes, we were I was in that experience. And then Maria said, it's time for you to meet your main guide, the main guide who's going to be there with you when you do your Reiki healings. And so she guides the meditation for me to walk out somewhere. It's like, you're, you're going to meet your guide. And in my meditation, my whole family, like everybody, all the animals, there was whales there, like, cause whales are very prominent for me in my spiritual practice. Um, it's like they all formed a lot, a line. It was like a, an aisle to walk down in the middle and they were all on the sides. And so I'm walking down this aisle of people that I love. Um, and at the very end is the guide that revealed himself to me himself i say him because he's he feels male um and i and i call him edward it's and when i asked for a name like a long time ago when i had a psychic affirm that for me i got an e name and i couldn't tell i was like edward i don't know and, and so she confirmed it in a reading she gave me a reading and she said his name is, starts with an e i can't pronounce it though it sounds alien and so anyway, <clears throat> Edward only reveals himself to me every once in a while. And I remember like very precisely when I first saw him, I was in a meditation in my apartment and it was the most insane thing because I'd never seen him before. So anyways, he's there, he's standing at the end of this aisle and he's just this figure, okay? He's like a, a human figure, but he's like, made up of galaxy there's no face there's no eyes there's no like there's no detail you just know it's a figure of a man but he's just made up of galaxy right and like and he's and he and all he did he really didn't talk he doesn't talk much um was hold me he hugged me so when maria was like have a have a conversation have a dialogue with your guide find out what they want you to know I was like, okay, Edward, you know, like, what do you want me to know? <laughs> and I know that this sounds so crazy. It probably sounds, I probably sound so crazy to some of you guys, but this was my experience. So he just hugs me. And I remember there was like another like wave of like, I love you. I love you. I love you. And all he did was, you know, hug me and hold me. And I think at that moment I needed that. And so then the meditation was starting to end, you know, Maria's like guiding me out. And I remember the last thing that, that the, my spirit guide showed me was three lights in a row, like three dots. And as soon as I saw it, it was very, I was very much aware that he was showing me the constellation Orion, the Orion's belt because of the three dots. And as soon as he showed me that, I knew my whole interest in alien, my whole interest in the pyramids and, and all of that, the fact that I was seeing a pyramid as like my home, my home and then the water. Um, I mean, we could go so deep into what these three dots mean. Um, he was showing me like where I came from. If you guys believe in that kind of thing, like that eventually where your soul came from, like, it doesn't, we don't always come from Earth, like we can come from other galaxies and this and that. This, this, I mean, it sounds, it's a, that's a whole other story in itself. But anyways, that's what he showed me and I took that with me. It was kind of like a secret. He passed on and he didn't even have to say anything. I just knew exactly what he meant. And so then she's guiding me out of this meditation. I'm saying goodbye to everybody. I give my, my brother a, a hug one more time and, and everyone else. And it was just like, just the most beautiful feeling, right? 
<clears throat> and she takes me out of the meditation and then she does the rest of the ritual where you are being attuned, which I'm not going to, I'm not going to go into detail about that because like, I want you guys, if you do get, if you do get this, um, if you get this done or you take the class or whatever, whether it's with her or whoever, I don't want to ruin that experience for you guys. I want you guys to have that experience like raw, like I did. So she did the, the rest of the ritual and then I was attuned and we, sh I shared with her what I experienced and stuff. And, um, it was just so crazy. Like I just felt so good. <laughs> so anyway, after that was over, I drove home and took me like a little bit longer than an hour to get home. I got traffic, but I was just, I was on cloud nine. It didn't, I didn't care. And I saw, I had so many visions, like I had, not visions, but like feelings of my brother around me at that point. And before, prior to this, like I was only feeling him every once in a while through like the form of numbers and stuff. So throughout the day, the rest of the day, it was like I was on cloud nine with my emotions. I felt really good. Um, I went shopping, as you guys who follow me on Instagram probably saw, I went shopping. And while I was at shopping, I ran into, or I didn't run into, but I saw my brother's two best friends. So that was another sign for me that he was around and, and you know, and um, it, it was just a really amazing day. The day, the rest of the day just felt like it floated by, right? <laughs> and then all of a sudden I had dry mouth. I was so thirsty. This was like right after I was done shopping. I just got this wave of being thirsty. I had dry mouth. I just, I needed water. So I got home from shopping and I grabbed a water bottle. I drank the whole thing and I just felt so tired, you guys. Like, oh, like everything like finally caught up to me, right? And I just, my eyes felt so tired. Like I couldn't close my eyes or I, I wanted to close my eyes. I wanted to just fall asleep and I was getting a headache. And, and, and then I was starting to think about everything, my experience and how much love I felt in that mo in that moment. And I got so emotional and it was just like all these feelings like I was just happy and then now I'm like feeling like I'm coming off of this high super exhausted and then now I was crying so I I did what I was taught in that class and I started to to do some Reiki on myself especially on my heart and um and then all of a sudden, all the feelings went away. It was like a passing rain cloud, right? So all of the tears stopped. I stopped crying. I wasn't crying anymore. I was normal. My husband came home from work. And <laughs> and I just, all I, all I knew I felt was exhaustion. I was exhausted. So I went to sleep and I knocked out. And it was the best sleep I had in a, <laughs> in a while. Sorry, I'm on local side now. <laughs> um, so anyway... <sighs> that was my experience, you guys. That is like my story to tell of my um, Reiki 1 certification. So I'm Reiki 1 certified now, and I plan on doing the second part um, once Maria has that class available. And in the meantime, I'm on my 21-day journey <laughs> um, practicing Reiki for 21 days um, on myself. I'm just, I'm really, I'm, I'm going to journal every night about this and just really take note of every experience that I have from here on. And it's just beautiful. I feel like my crystal, like my labradorite, I feel like he is so just intense with energy now. Like last night he felt so hot, like warm and, and buzzing. Oh, here we go. Now, now he's showing his flash buzzing in my hand I just felt so connected to spirit I wasn't you know you guys know I've been feeling like spiritually disconnected I don't anymore I feel like I needed that I needed that hug so I'm not a very affectionate person um I grew up not really being hugged or told I was loved by my family it was just something that we don't do you know so when I have friends who like to hug and and all of that I, hugging Maria felt normal. It was weird. I, I hugged Maria like four or five times. But there's some times where I, you know, my friends are huggy huggy or whatever. Um, and I don't get into that. And I wish I do. But I know it has a lot to do with the fact that I grew up 
in a household where I barely touched my mom or my dad, you know? And I don't remember the last, I think the last time we really told each other we love each other was when my brother died. Um, I tell my husband every day I love him and I, I'm very affectionate with him, but there's there are times I know he notices too that I don't, I'm not very lovey-dovey, but it's just part of the way I was raised um, and I try to change that. I want to change that, especially if I have a baby of my own. I want to make sure I, I hug and kiss my baby and tell my child I love them every day because <clears throat> I do see the, the after effects of that. And so I think that in that meditation I had, why my guide, all he, all he did, all he, he didn't say anything to me. All he did was hug me. Um, and then there was so many I love yous being said throughout that whole meditation I think it's because that's what I crave the most and what I needed the most in that time. So it was a really cool, it was a really amazing experience. It was beautiful. So anyways, you guys, this video is like super long. I hope that it doesn't give me problems uploading it. But um, thank you guys so much if you listened throughout this whole thing and, and for just being a part of this journey with me. And I look forward to sharing with you some more later on. But I want to finish my coffee. I have some um, energy healing readings, energy readings that I'm going to be doing for clients. So I'm going to like get into the zone and start um, channeling that and writing their stuff down. So <laughs> um, have a beautiful day and thank you guys for watching. And if you are interested in having a reading done with me, a tarot reading, an intuitive reading, um, Click the link in my bio <clears throat> or in the description box and check me out and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye loves.